So, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. Right? I know. Right? Listen, let's cut to the chase on this because I can talk forever and I think a lot of you out there want to have, you know, have input and have a lot to say about what's going on. Things have rapidly changed. Uh, we've been pushed a little bit down a cliff here, uh, <laughs> maybe, uh, likely, in, you know, just in the last, you know, 12, 24, 48 hours since my last video. The video that I'm referring to as far as where this is kind of playing off of is I uh, have challenged you. That's a nice way of saying I am urging you to literally try to put away five canned goods per week going forward. Not something that you've canned in your home. That's not what I'm talking about. If you're doing that, that's great, but that's not the challenge. You're not, you're not doing it. <laughs> you're not doing it right. Um, I am challenging. I am urging you. I, I am almost, I don't beg and plead, but uh, whatever the next step closest to that is, I'm, I'm almost there because I am telling you right now, I went to Walmart yesterday. You're probably like me. Um, you know, you, you, maybe you have had some difficulties the last two years, job or illness, loss. We've talked about these things before, and maybe you finally have kind of gotten back to a point where you just got back to a point where you kind of feel like you could go do something or be normal. And what I want you to think about real quick is I want you to notice how you have changed. Remember the whole thing of lowering your expectations? They mean what they say when they say it. It's not just to sound helpful at the time or to sound smart at the time, such as what we've heard in the last 24 hours or 48 hours of how prices are going to go up. Folks, use the brain that God and Granny gave you and listen to what's being told to you when it is. And take it serious and read between the lines. I'm telling you, they're telling you what's coming for you, coming for us. It's just a matter of you willing to listen and recognize what all that means. Now, I'm going to say a couple of different things here. I want to, what I, you know, what I want to urge is that I'm going to say a couple of different things. This is, folks, we could sit and literally order pizzas and have chocolate and cheesecakes and talk for hours about all of this. You know, I get it. And a lot of you want to do that, and I do too. So we'll just have to do it one bite at a time in, in film. But here's the deal. Prices are about to go up big time. Uh, we're being warned about, obviously, with the whole deal with Ukraine um, and Russia, um, obviously gas, gas prices. We've talked about how, you know, just the other day, do you want to pay $4 a gallon for gas? A lot of you already are. What if you start paying six, seven? Where does this end, really? Um, that is very paralyzing to even think about because you have to go to work. You buy foods that are delivered to stores. You know, Anything that we do now is revolving around basically energy and energy prices. So that is going to affect the bottom line. Big time, it is going to affect farmers. Um, what is it they just said? Fertilizer up over 300%. Do you know how paralyzing that is for a farmer? Folks, these people that grow food for you and for me, even all of us, they're going to do what's best for their bottom line, their farm, and their family first. You are no different, so don't you dare get mad at them. The point here is, is a lot of these people are changing courses in their farm and in their agri agricultural produ uh, productivity and what they're doing. Some of them are just getting out of it altogether. There's a lot to say here. My point is, this all goes back to feeding yourself. Now, I get a lot of folks that say things to me like, I'm doing my first garden this year. Um, I, I'm just now really, I feel like in the last year or two, I'm waking up and what do I need to do? So again, I, I stress to you, if you are an individual who has been doing gardening, farming, homesteading, canning, um, you know, all of these uh, self-reliant skills, you've really kept it in your family and in your generations or you went back to it and that's that's been you know in your family fiber especially for you know the last 10 or 20 years you are not who I'm really talking to but you can help 
because you're going to agree if you're really doing it and you really love it and you want people to succeed. The reality is this is not something you necessarily say, by gosh, I'm just going to start farming today and be self-reliant and that's the end of it. It takes years. I don't say that to sound negative or to discourage anybody. I'm trying to be the voice that tells you the truth as opposed to just makes a video on showing you how to do a skill that's probably unrealistic for you to completely jump into right now, or not to jump into, but to expect huge major results from. Folks, that doesn't necessarily really happen for people the first one, two, three years, depending on what you're talking about. You don't just go buy a dairy cow and you're guaranteed, and she's never had a calf before, maybe she's going to this year and you're guaranteed success. You're not going to go get a flock of chickens and necessarily they'll even make it in the next three to six months. You're not guaranteed that all of the food that you might can or attempt to, to learn to can this season because it's your first time, doesn't something doesn't go wrong. There's a major learning curve in all of this. So I am telling you, if I, I don't want to knock this over. I went to Walmart yesterday. I went to Walmart because... Folks, I can garden all day long. I can milk a cow. You've seen it. I have her. I have three. I'm going to have milk. I have chickens. You know, I, I have the lifestyle that I want. I have what I hope I need. We always need more. But my point is, is I know there is failure. There is a learning curve. And if something were to just derail in six weeks from now, are you really going to be able to necessarily put a hundred tomato plants and an acre of potatoes in and two acres of corn in? And ha do you have three hogs to slaughter? And do you have the ox to help you with the plow? And uh, I mean, do you understand, and I don't mean this to sound demeaning or to speak with any condescension, but do you understand what I'm saying? I am telling everybody, your mama, me, you, everybody, regardless of age, regardless of skill and ability and things that you have, while you can get items and still hopefully semi-afford them, please put your tail in the car and go get them. Because let me tell you right now, the shelves don't look that great. This goes back to what I was talking about earlier in the conversation about your expectations are, you know, I don't know if did I say this, it's in my mind. Your expectations have been lowered. You know, five years ago when you'd walk into a Walmart or Costco or wherever, stuff would be bulging everywhere. Now, give or take at times in the last couple of months, you go to a store and you look around. I mean, this conversation happens every time. James and I go, okay, it's not so bad in here. We, it's like we, we kind of temper it. Do you do the same thing? I know you do. Okay, so they, they had bread today. Okay, I feel a little bit better. You are literally gauging your stress, your life, your success by, whoo, okay, all right. Okay, gas didn't go up another 20 cents uh, since last Friday. Okay. Wow, okay, okay, okay. So I can't get the Cheerios or the corn checks, but... <laughs> They had lucky charms. So, okay, I, I feel, do you realize what has happened to you and what has happened to us? Remember the whole lower your expectations? You've lowered them. Pardon me, but doesn't that piss you off? Pisses me off. Because, see, I've come full circle to realize that's what I've been doing. I've settled in a comfort zone of, Woo, okay, in a, in a, you know, going to a Dollar General where there would be cases of toilet paper for anybody to get their hands on if they needed it at that moment. No problem to, whew, there's six of them. I'm going to get two and leave four for the rest. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The only difference between you not getting some is the idea of if something suddenly happens... Do you know how fast that's going to go away from you? Had, did you not live through 2020? <laughs> if you're sitting here and you're actually listening to me rant off a little bit here, hopefully you're at least two years old and you have a comprehension of what we just went through. 
And so now because of supply chain issues, economic issues, um, tyrannical issues, uh, uh, all of these things, and it just keeps going and going and going. You have lowered your expectation. Let's not do this again, number one. But number two, let's not get caught unprepared for a situation that could be worse than anything we've seen even in 2020. Because if you think 98% of the population is going to be able to self-sustain off of anything they grow in their backyard, you are very, very well mistaken. I say that to you because somebody needs to say it. I know I know that we like to turn on YouTube, we like to watch videos, and a lot of us want to feel good and eat chocolate cake and, you know, Patera, you know, blah, blah. Listen to me. And for the handful of you, like four of you, which will, are, are probably not smart enough to go ahead and watch this video, I'm just calling it like it is. <laughs> One lady said she wouldn't feed her dog spam. And the next lady, or guy, it could have been a guy, actually said, talked about how, you know, spam is poison. Well, you know what? I, I got news for you. I, I, I hate to tell you, but you're not going to make it. Not going to make it. Because if that's the attitude that you have, then you have no, you have absolutely zero uh, comprehension and, or conception of what's going on. Your food supply is literally on, is being attacked. It's being attacked. That's why you have to lower your expectation, dear. And if spam is what's going to be on the dinner plate, you better learn to like it. Because licking the dirt is the other option. And that's probably what you'll end up doing. We don't have time to fret over things. We don't have time to really debate things anymore. No one that is actually trying to wake you up or shake you up or make you think really has the time to be doing what we're doing right now. It's very stressful because we're trying to make our farms work. And it is a 24-hour job right now. The stress is unbelievable. So I can't imagine the stress of some of you that are awake, that are living in a place that necessarily understands what all I'm saying. But I do know one thing, you better, you understand, you, uh, you understand, you better have spam on the shelf. When did we become so self-righteous and narcissistic and stupid to the fact or to the idea that starvation is a better option? Listen, get the spam, be a good Samaritan. You might choose not to eat it, but maybe you'll feed a five-year-old somewhere. So let's grow up. So I go through Walmart yesterday. We go through Walmart. Okay, okay, there's pastries on the shelf. I feel good. You know, I'm like, okay, there's some bananas. I got some bananas. Whew, okay, uh, the vegetable section is not looking too hot, but I'm used, to, I'm used to that. I go around to the frozen food section. Pizzas, uh, I like to make my own pizzas, but I will buy frozen pizzas. Depends on where you go and what day, sweetheart. You might have to lower your expectation. Uh, the bread, they did get a shipment of bread in. The, their shelving of bread looked pretty decent. Um, the meat section wasn't the worst I've seen. But then again, I've lowered my expectations. I got baloney. Cereal hit or miss. Gatorade looked like somebody had torn through it. We can't get yet certain yogurts here. We I haven't had a good vanilla yogurt in I don't know how long. Now, can you make your own? Of course. We're not debating these things. We're talking about what probably 98% of the population is doing, seeing, or eating. Okay? So, you have to understand that when you go through and you're so used to not having access to things like you used to, this is conditioning you, your mind, and your body into settling for less. But what is concerning for me is the whole idea of, you know, we're, we're, we're excited because the shelves are 60% full. Okay, go back two years when everybody started making a run on everything. And things started disappearing and they, were disappear and they were gone for a long time. How long did that take in your area for that to happen? 
So you pull down the supply that's available for the next episode. Guys, you're up the creek without a paddle. Don't, don't be in that scenario. Let's not be in that scenario. Now, a lot of people are going to say, well, you, you should be promoting gardening and self-sustainability and should be, yeah, I absolutely should. I, you, you should have been, you know, you should have been gardening six years ago when I told you to, when I started making videos called, Would You Starve? Did you do it? Oh, most people didn't. You're right. I agree with you. Most people should have sold their, changed jobs or maybe gone and bought property and moved away and started homeschooling. I've been urging you that for, to do that for years. Did you do it? You see, I'm speaking to those that didn't do it and realized they should have done it or they wanted to do it and they couldn't for whatever reason. So I'm telling you, don't give up on the gardening. Get your seeds because they're going up 30% per, per the report I heard today. You know, there was a lot of trouble last year getting certain seeds. I, I, I had the biggest time getting uh, seed potatoes. Then this year, because I ordered them first thing in October, and I've kept a lot of my own because I learned. It was a learnia dernia. You should only have a learnia dernia one time. And I don't ever want to be in the learnia dernia of starvation. So this is what I'm saying. These, this is my little deal that I got yesterday at Walmart. You know how I'm telling you to get five cans a week? Well, I got just a little bit more than that. But this is the route that I went. I told you to get your collard greens. People don't think of this. Get your collard greens. I grabbed some corn. Folks, I'm going to tell you what. Uh, I pray, I pray, I pray that we do not see a problem with corn because we, we so heavily rely on it. But all indications with fertilizer and farming that corn, your grains... We've already talked about grains before, are going to be hit really hard. See, this is already happening. You're just not feeling it yet. Do you understand these things? Again, I, I don't mean that, I, I, you know, I, I'm not trying to talk to you like you're six, because a lot of you out there know more than I do. But I'm just like, I, I, it's like I'm almost talking to myself, because there are times and moments or days in recent days I go, is this, whole, is this real? Cool. I, you better take your corn very serious. Um, I also think that, you know, growing things for powders, garlic powder or all this, you know, I, I really love the comments of, well, I grow my own garlic and make my own garlic powder. Fantastic. Again, do that. But it's not going to hurt you to put one or two of these away in the pantry. What if your, gar what if your garlic rots? What if, what if you have like monsoon season sweep through? I mean, we haven't exactly had very normal weather in a while, so... I wouldn't depend on anything. I would have a backup. So I grabbed a couple of spices. They're not fancy, okay? Are they gonna last till the end of time? Well, at the rate we're going, they might, but <laughs> funny not. But, you know, I grabbed a couple of spices. I was like, what, what are some things I can get today? I went in for some specific things that I needed and I went, okay, what are some things that I can grab just to know that I did? You know, I did my due diligence, my five, my five cans this week. I did corn, I did spinach. Uh, this is not long term, but James said, Lord, can we have some sandwiches soon? And I was like, okay. <laughs> that was his deal right there. I got some quick little individual cans of salmon. You know, you can buy them in bigger cans. But you know what? You, you need to have diversity in your pantry. Uh, you need to have different sizes um, and maybe different flavors. Uh, you know, cream corn, whole corn, you know, whatever, you know, white corn, you know, you know, different things, different things. Maybe some things are available versus not. Don't wait. Don't go, well, if I go down to Jim Bob Cooter's store next week, well, if you go to Jim, if you don't get these and you wait and you go to Jim Bob Cooter's and Jim Bob doesn't have it, and then the next time you go back to Walmart and then this is not there, then you missed out altogether. I'm telling you to go for the whole enchilada where, when and however you can when it's available. I, I really don't think beggars can be choosy anymore. I'm saying look at it and go, yeah, I'm going to get that. I, it, it's not even a game of a question of a, a question about it. Please get soups. I know they're expensive. I mean, can you believe the price of soups? I'll put that in the video. I mean, we're talking like a dollar seventy-eight for Campbell's. Now, there's the generic. Buy the generic. But can you believe that a little chicken noodle soup of Campbell's 
the little can that we all ate growing up as little kids with grilled cheese or tomato you know tomato soup uh yeah no we ate grilled cheese with the, with the, with those but do you know what I'm saying they're a dollar 78 that is highway robbery how much more expensive does it have to get so what I'm saying to you is is yes you need to have a plan you need to have a safe home you need to have seeds you, you, you need to beef everything up tenfold starting last week. But for the love of everything good, please make sure you are getting your canned goods. Because we're only into the end of, end of February for 2022, and it is not looking that hot. It's the year of the comeback for us because we're gaining control of our lives as best we can. And we are coming back here. And we realize that we have to take care of ourselves because no one else is doing it. If no one else is speaking to you like this, I really urge you to spend your time or watch those that are. Because your time, is, your mind and your time are the most important things that you have. Because those are going to be the things that you're going to be able to take and to put into being able to do such things. To get up and go to the store and get with these things and put them away. That is very stressful for a lot of people. And I know that. I know that. I see it by your comments and by what you're telling me and what you're messaging me. I know how scary this is. I tell you to have no fear. God tells us to have no fear doesn't mean we're not human. The best way to gain control of that is to do the best you can and to not be foolish into thinking that you're invincible. You're invincible if you've been smart and you have been willing to prepare. It is being will, it, you have to be willing to prepare because that means you've pulled your head out of wherever it's been and you say, this is what it is, and this is what I have to do. I'm taking that responsibility for me, but I'm taking it also for my kids and for my family and for my neighbors. Because that's what my grandfathers at one time somewhere, grandmothers too, that's what they did for me. That's why I'm here. That's why we made it. You're still here. Make sure your grandbabies will be also in 50 years. So get up and go make it happen. I call it my five can challenge. I think you need to up it up. Up it up if you can, quickly, very quickly. Because if all else fails, while you're trying to move, while you're trying to get chickens, while you're trying to plant tomatoes coming up, while you're trying to learn to can, while you're trying to learn to make bread, all the while you are trying and will be, will make you successful at doing these things. You have an automatic backup. That's gold. That's gold. Appreciate you watching today. I want to encourage you on that. Answer a couple of questions. Try to have community, so because what happens is, is you come in underneath, and a lot of you make so many comments, I can't even read them all. I, I just want you to know that, um, and it's not because I don't want to. It's a t it, 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 there's so many in time, but I appreciate you being here. People are tuning in, and people want leadership, and people want to communicate with people that are proactive, and that understand that we have to be beyond willing to prepare. It's past time. It's past time. All right, guys. The ingredients for the chocolate cake are right there. <laughs> God love your hearts. <laughs> Bless your heart. All right, guys. I love y'all. Thank you for being here, and thank you for this community, and thank you for supporting us over the last eight years and growing our channel like you are and like you have. It's tremendous. It really is. And we're just going to continue to keep doing our thing. You know, we're not gardening yet, but we are in the throes of beginning to start really preparing and beefing it up. 
And I'm telling you, you better think long game. Don't think short-sighted just on the next three to six months. We're not throwing Hail Marys. We're going long game. We'll see you on the next video.